the first thing to cover is we had our first churn of the year, which is kind of a bummer. Starting next month, we should hit all time high record numbers. I'm normally Johnny Raincloud, but actually the positive spin I'll put on it is it's kind of nice to be like our first churn of the year of, of a, any client was in March. Not bad. Also, when Benji says it's a big hit, this was actually a really successful engagement in that the client had expanded beyond our normal amount a couple times and was doing paid search with us. So the actual like revenue or dollar amount was almost double a typical client for us. Okay, so today we're doing March update. We're recording this on April 5th. Benji, do you wanna cover the key stats in March for the agency, then we'll go into details? Sure, I mean, the first thing to cover is we had our first churn of the year, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah, we've been working with this client for a little under two years, and it was just kind of a bummer that they churned just because we hit kind of all-time, I think it was all-time high traffic, uh, and slightly below all time highs on the conversion side. But yeah, so that was that was a big hit in this month. But on the positive side, uh, we had an existing client expand with us. And then we did close two new clients as well. So one that starts or that started already uh, in April, and then another one that's signed on a yearly contract for May. All in all, while the, the churn was a bummer, we ended on the positive side and starting next month, we should hit all time high record numbers. Again, we're recording this in April. So next month when Benji says that means May. Regarding March, some more details from what you said. I'm normally Johnny Raincloud, but actually the positive spin I'll put on it is it's kind of nice to be like our first churn of the year of client was of a, any client was in March. Not bad. Also, when Benji says it's a big hit, the client, this was actually a really successful engagement in that the client had expanded beyond our normal amount a couple times and um, was doing paid search with us. So the actual like revenue or dollar amount was almost double a typical client for us. And so that's why it like felt from a dollars and cents perspective, like almost losing two clients because it literally was almost like losing two clients. Um, in terms of the dynamics of it, like, and, and things to learn, I consider this actually kind of like natural churn. It was a successful engagement, like you said, um, almost two years, which we have said is like our average. So it's it was a little bit under our average, a few months under our average of how long someone stays when they stay with us for a year. So if they stay with us for at least a year, typically they see the results and the value and they average over two years with us. And this was a little bit under that. And the reason I say it's natural churn is um, they just had some like changes in leadership that wanted to try different uh, in like sales and marketing channels and they want to invest in that. And so we still have a good relationship with them as far as at least we're aware. We all know that the results from content and inbound and the stuff we were doing were really good. Like you said, like reaching all time highs towards the end and yeah, and we're keeping that relationship open, but like, you know, com companies want to try things. I mean, two years is a long time. And so if they want to bring in folks that want to try different things, like that's totally normal and fine. And this is kind of like, in my mind, like natural agency churn. I mean, this is just part of the business. Yeah. One, one other thing that I want to touch on with, with this account, I think just from a learning perspective, is this account challenged us in a lot of ways that we maybe haven't been challenged by other accounts. More, more because it was definitely on the more technical side or most technical that we've taken period. Uh, and so from a writing perspective, I, I remember talking through this in the very beginning, like wondering if we could even write for this account because it was so technical, but yeah, a couple of people on our team stepped up and, and were able to, to do the writing for it and the keyword research and that kind of stuff. So I just think looking back on this account, it was a really good learning experience and kind of gave us the confidence to, to take on more technical accounts. And, and maybe I think if we hadn't taken on this account a couple of years ago, that new account that we had talked about, that's also on the, the more technical side, maybe not have, I, I don't know if we would have felt as comfortable taking that on had we not done this. 
And that's kudos to the team for kind of learning. We had like multiple members of the team that have worked on this that have been awesome and been able to kind of pull it off. So that was on the the churn side. Otherwise, as Benji said, we had um, uh, one client expand. Yeah, one client expand. According to my stats, and I didn't kind of confirm these numbers with you before we started recording, but I think we are um, talking about client numbers on this. So I have it counted without counting the expansions as like multiple clients, which is kind of weird, right? If you're like trying to double the agency and someone expands, maybe we should count that as two. But if we're not doing that in March, I think we have 15 clients if we exclude paid. So, you know, we can just, I mean, a couple months into this double our agency series or show, you can double check this while I'm doing this, Benji, but... You know, it doesn't really mean much until we're like a year in. We can see what that growth of that is. But, you know, that is what it is. So we'll keep that in, in mind for future update episodes. And then on the positive side, we got, I think, nine. Let me double check the lead count, like quality, qualified leads. One, two, six, seven, eight, nine is what I'm counting. We also, um, I also fixed our lead tracking spreadsheet which is what we're using should we admit to everyone that it's not an official crm but i'm actually proud of the fact that we don't waste time with a bunch of software we don't need (laughs) um someone someone asked me if i I used a crm the other day and i said no but i i think not just not spending the money i think the reason why we don't need a crm is because you and i are still doing sales if we had a sales team and other people were entering information in we'd like how to pass information to other people, then I definitely think we would probably need something more robust than a spreadsheet. But at this stage, we're talking to all the leads still. And so, yeah, I feel like we remember our conversations and it's it's not a huge deal to, to do things this way. While we're on this sidebar, I'm gonna give another sidebar that may get some angry comments because we sometimes we have these takes and then there's someone who's like passionately against it. This might be, but since I think people enjoy these rants, in our episodes, I'm gonna do one. I have noticed, I don't have data on this, it's anecdotal, but I feel like every client that is closed in the history, like whatever number of years we've been doing this, they haven't closed because we followed up with them. Like the good clients that close, they follow up with us. So like, I know, I'm sure if salespeople are listening to this, they're gonna be like, that is such terrible advice. Like you have salespeople, like they follow up immediately and all this like sales follow up stuff. And don't get me wrong, like we follow up. We're not totally terrible at this, but I've just noticed anecdotally, like no one is like, oh, thanks for following up. It just reminded me, I wanna hire you guys. Like if they wanna hire us after that initial conversation, maybe this applies to like booking that first call. But once the call happens, like if they're interested, no one pays our rates just like on a whim because we happen to email them. They like, talk to their team they discuss it it's like a decent fraction of their budget and then they're like hey guys like we want to move forward so that's yet another reason why like some crm stuff that i read about of just like an automate follow-ups and like the crm will tell you that you haven't that this thing is cold it's like sure i guess like i get that that's best practice but like in my anecdotal experience like if a client's going to close they reach out to us (laughs) is that really irresponsible to say no because i i also think like if, yeah, again, if you have to convince someone to work with you right, and they're making this big of a decision, I, I just feel like it, it's going to be a short-term engagement anyways. I, I, if, I, if I remember, like there has been a couple of accounts where maybe we did follow up and they did start and then just it's too wishy-washy. They start and then like two or three months in, they're, they're over it. So yeah, I feel like it's always a good sign when someone comes back and they're super into it and they're following up with us, then it's usually going to be a, a good fit in an account that, that lasts for a long time. Yeah. Um, nine good leads. Oh, I guess we should have looked carefully at the sources. I don't know whether this is correlation and causation. I mean, we have started, I mean, we have this series, obviously. As a result of this series, we've also started like putting a lot of these takes on social, whether it be Twitter, LinkedIn and all. I don't see anything clear in our data that suggests like it's this one channel. No, it's been a mix. I mean, I know I know a few of the leads have come from Twitter. I don't remember some of the other sources of them. I have to go back and look. I think some of them are referrals from people. We ask at the bottom of our lead form, how did you hear about us? I don't think a single one, or at least in my memory, has said 
like LinkedIn or like YouTube video series. But a part of me wonders if the referrals are from this increased activity. I think this whole series has caused us to like, we put it on social, Twitter, LinkedIn, a bunch more. We're like emailing it. And if that activity is causing people that kind of know us to be top of mind in their heads and then they refer us when some of someone in their network is looking, that's kind of this hard to track stuff. And I hate acknowledging these marketers' arguments about like hard to non-attributable sources or whatever, dark social hocus pocus, but there may be some of that happening. <laughs> As well, much yeah, as I mean, the, the social stuff is there's decent points there. It, it's definitely hard to track. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree with the challenge with tracking on social. I don't agree with the, the challenge on tracking with content side. And on the content side, we do have it. We just didn't look at it beforehand. Other than that, like big picture stuff, marketing wise, we have worked with this company called Clutch. For anyone in the agency space, it's almost like a G2 crowd or I forget the other company that does reviews. G2 crowd and something for SaaS, but they're basically the equivalent of like G2 crowd for agencies. And so I think going into last year, we created a profile on there and started getting more active and we have been paying to advertise on there for the last year. And it's decently expensive. Our contract is ending at the end of this month and I don't think that we're gonna renew it, um, mainly because all of our attribution has really said that that channel hasn't really done anything for us. I don't think we've really gotten any qualified leads from it. And so we're thinking about shifting the budget elsewhere. So other things that we're thinking of trying with this budget, increase link building to some of our key pieces on our website. I think that's definitely gonna be something that we test. Uh, recently I had someone reach out again about doing LinkedIn posting for us. And so potentially trying them out uh, in the coming month or two. And so that'll be another test and something that we can check back in on next month that I think we're gonna do. And then I think something that the audience could help us on that I've talked about and we haven't had much success finding is could we invest that money that we had in Clutch, which is a non-trivial amount per month on like other sponsorships, sponsoring a newsletter or podcast ads or whatever. And we have Amethyst on our team, which was who was guested on our last episode, looking into some of that. And I think we found in our last conversation, internal conversation, at least one channel to possibly try Spotify podcasts or something to test for some yeah, podcasts. Yeah, we talked ads. about that. I actually think the conclusion that we came to is to just test more stuff on Twitter. So I've redone some of our ad copy and we're going to test some new articles on the ad side and just kind of see what happens. But yeah, I think for us, it's continue to double down on the channels that are working, remove the stuff that's not working, and then continue to test new channels all the time and just... Yeah, I, I agree. Newsletters could be interesting. I've looked into sponsoring some communities. Yeah, I think for our thing, what we've noticed, and I guess this wouldn't be really a surprise to anyone following Grow and Convert, is like the people, how do I say this? Like our pitch, our differentiation, why you work with us, why you hire us is not, is like a long form argument. Does that make any sense? Like we're not selling some simple software where it's like, oh, I don't know, like try zero instead of quickbooks or something like it's like the best leads have like bought in they like read like long articles on our site they like understand the pains of doing content the wrong way they've worked with other agencies or providers and they uh, are like tired of it and then they they read our approach bottom of funnel pain point seo whatever you want to call it or even just our ability to write high quality content and they're like wow these people like think about it differently you know, this is like a fresh thing. This is what we've always wanted. Yes, like our stuff doesn't convert and why Why have you been doing it this way? That whole message is not a short pithy message. So it's, it's not like selling B2C stuff where you just like this little like social ad where you're just like, oh, I don't know, like this apparel looks good. And even software, it's not just like give our you know, I don't know, like accounting, CRM, whatever that we've discussed on this call, like, you know, Salesforce is complicated. Try our simple CRM for accountants or something like that. Like that's not, it's not a quick thing like that. Like you have to get into it. And so these forms where like on a podcast, the audience is like listening for long form conversation and maybe we're there, maybe we can tell them to go read our stuff. I don't know. We haven't tried it, but just that's my hunch is like, 
you know, like we know what has worked historically is like all of our content combined. And so it's like, what are ways where we can get in front of an audience where their mentality is the right mentality for reading long form content, if that makes sense? Yeah, going back to Twitter. So that, that was kind of the thinking in Twitter is looking back at what have historically been our highest converting blog posts. And then can we write the copy in a way that is more high level, I, I want to say, like storytelling, like connect, connecting with people where they're at. So I think trying to connect with people, thinking through the stage of the person or like the problem they're facing in their business and writing copy in a way that relates to that. And then using that as a way to get people into the blog post. Because I think one of the challenges that we have is a lot of our blog posts are pretty advanced, I want to say. Like we get way too into the details of like conversion data, like GA4 stuff, like all the all this stuff that you would only really get to it if you were in the weeds of content marketing. And then a lot of the, the people that are hiring us are think think of content at way more of a high level and so yeah the thinking has been just in our social posting and in our ads can we almost simplify the high level messaging of some of our blog posts so that it doesn't scare people away before they even get into the the details of reading it yeah i wouldn't even phrase it scare people away i think it just is sometimes too detailed and too advanced to where it's 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 just almost boring like it's like it's not even scary. It's just like eyes gloss over. I don't, I don't know what they're talking about. Let me just move on. Like, in fact, yesterday or the day before, I posted this LinkedIn post with some data and some particular client issue that, that we or you actually championed this week. And, and I posted it in a very simple way of like, look, we're like attributing leads to individual keywords. Now, I felt weird doing it because it's like kind of a message we've been saying for like six or seven years, <laughs> like, like measure leads from individual articles. It also had this slight twist that I, you know, some people pushed back on rightfully so of like, it's not really individual keywords because a single article ranks for multiple keywords. So that I kind of feel bad that maybe that was a bit of a, um, I should have added more disclaimer to that. But anyway, the message was very simple. It was like, and I was, I felt self-conscious, like, isn't this just kind of what we've been saying for six years? And I'm just kind of saying it again with fresh data. I swear from whatever LinkedIn stats are showing me, it's like the highest impression LinkedIn post I've had like ever. Or, or in a, like a long time. And so that was another data point of like, oh, like just say the basic thing. Like, <laughs> or we had another like ex client reach out that's like known us and been in our community for a long time. And we're in some, like there was a particular exchange that you might not even remember, but they asked this question that was just like, and or someone asked a question the other day was like, and how do we like attribute conversions to each of these posts and i was just like what like we've been talking about this for like seven years and but like that like people are thinking about it at just like okay just like how do i know this is working like just like, like a really basic level and you need to meet them there which is ironically our own advice for writing some of this content but we sometimes yeah, you, i you sometimes you forget you forget that you get way too into yeah. the details like even even with our homepage messaging i i remember we had that challenge because we almost went too complicated. Like the, the message was just like, you would only understand that if you have been in content for a long time and you could understand the nuance of what we were talking about. So yeah, it, it's just a good reminder. I think for a lot of people is like, yeah, sometimes just simplifying things is, is better. Yeah. A lot of our com paying clients for long periods of time are just like, you guys do SEO and it converts. Or something like that. Or like, I, I'm, I'm like kind of like making that up. But like they're thinking about it at just like the basic benefit level. Like this is stuff that converts. You're like, okay. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. You can also get the audio only versions of these shows wherever you get your podcasts. And you can follow us at growandconvert.com slash newsletter for any articles and updates for when these videos come out.